when you come back, I'll be two-time British Superbike champion. That's what we actually said, but it didn't work out. I broke my right ankle, broke my right shoulder, dislocated my right shoulder, was in a wheelchair for three weeks. Someone then walked in behind us and went, uh, your brother's just had a massive crash. I was like, all right, um, is he all right? No, I reckon he's broke his leg. Well, my Alpine Star boot appeared next to my head and then as I rolled it went back down and I'm like, oh my God, I've snapped my leg. Hello everyone, today we are back with another video. I'm gonna be talking to Taz about breaking his legs three times this year and more importantly, where that's led him to and what he's gonna be doing next year potentially and how excited we are about it. The reason I've got a microphone and I'm sat on his uh, couch with it is because in the middle of the year, I got asked to do, out of nowhere, an interview for Eurosport live on TV, and I asked the person a question, they were the sidecar winners, I asked them a question, and realised that I never went like this, with a microphone, so on TV, they're just miming at the TV because I didn't have the microphone, so I've bought this to practice. So, let's go back, we're now in December, 12 months ago, at the start of this year, we went to Spain. Mm -hmm and it was a uh, traumatic time. So I'm now going to hand the microphone to you and you can talk us through what an excellent time we had in Spain. Well, started in January in Spain, 72 hours traveling there and then spent 72 hours in hospital. I broke my right ankle, broke my right shoulder, dislocated my right shoulder, was in a wheelchair for three weeks. Yeah, that was about it. Well, how did you break it? Ran off at turn one at Cartagena, couldn't stop for whatever reason and uh, ended up laying the bike down and it was just a pure tyre wall I hit. There was no air fence, so didn't really do that much damage to the bike, but just mashed myself into the the tyre wall, um, stood up. I've never dislocated my shoulder before, but I kind of realised that I had when it was facing backwards. Um, and then I tried walking to the ambulance and when I started walking, it was like a bag of tools were like just crunching around in my foot so I realized I'd done something to my ankle as well so I was on gas and air and morphine and John McPhee's trying to pull my boots off and my leathers off because I literally had a brand new suit on and I didn't want them to cut it off John and Alistair his dad were obviously really helpful for us at that that period they kind of helped you pack the van and and um, made sure we were both okay and then for you and John well, for you, you were then my carer. John kind of carried on um, doing his his bits with training and stuff. So it was, uh, we had such a good few weeks planned and then it turned out that I was just um, recovering every day and, and John had to do his own thing and, and you had to look after me, unfortunately. So I started then seeing my physio at home, Stuart, that I see, well, I've pretty much seen most days all of this year because I've practically been injured the whole year. And then I flew back out to Girona to get more physio over there and just have a bit of time in the sun. And then I came back and ended up being fit for the first test. I hadn't ridden a bike since Brands the year before in October. I did a day riding in Cartena and then hurt myself. And I turned up to the first test in a pretty good shape. I didn't feel great on the bike, but the speed-wise was okay. At that point, I thought, oh, I'm okay for the first round. I was kind of didn't have to worry about the injury because when we f it first happened, I felt like I just messed everything up. But then really I thought, oh, I'm okay. I'm, I haven't, shouldn't have been worrying because I was going to be all right for the first round. And then went to the Silverstone test um, and unfortunately I had a crash at the end of the first day. The rear came round on me um, and I actually landed back in the seat. But unfortunately, as I, it was so fast, the corner, the last corner at Silverstone, as I landed back in the seat, I just uncontrollably open the throttle and that set the bike off and then I was just on like a a bucking bronco then it just was out of the seat as I landed was open the throttle and it just kind of took me for a ride and and pitched me off at 140 150 mile an hour and and um and then broke my left ankle so that was a week before the first round so I thought well definitely not making the first round now with the first ankle I had three screws operated uh, on it in Barcelona and then with my second ankle which I broke at Silverstone um, I had two plates and 12 screws put in my left ankle. For people that don't know mm. um, 
you've obviously had three huge injuries. What who pays for? You've had how many hours of physio this year? Just talk to them. Like who pays for that? Where does it come from? Do you still get paid as a motorbike racer? How does it work? Uh, yeah, so I was lucky in the sense with my contract, I think, I can't remember what it is, it's a certain weeks or months, if you're out, you stop getting paid, so every time I was injured, I was kind of saved myself because I was riding each time. Um, the first injury, I have I pay for my insurance personally, I, myself, um, with a, a really good policy, it's expensive, and I don't mind paying it because I hope that I never have to use it. But if I do have to use it, it covers me in such a good way that it doesn't cost me a thing. So um, like the first crash in, in Spain, if I didn't have this insurance that covered me in Europe and all that, then I think the bill racked up to around €25,000. Um, when we got to the hospital, it was like, have you got insurance? Yeah, okay, because we're about to charge you five grand to go get an x-ray or we're going to operate now, have you got your card? And that's what it was like, but my insurance covered me for the whole of that, which was great. So I was really fortunate that I just paid the money to, to insure myself in a good way and it luckily it paid off. Um, the second time, the injury I had in the UK, my insurance covered all of my physio to get back. So for me, I... I just want to get back as quickly as possible, so I'll do everything I can. I'll, I'll, I bought equipment for myself, um, to just try and speed the process up. I flew back out to Girona because I felt like at the time it was better for me to be there. That was then April, sixth of April, and I think I came back in May, uh, for round three of BSB, which is at Donington National. So, I uh, missed Silverstone. I missed Alton. And then it was the northwest break, so I was lucky in that sense because normally if it, if it wasn't there, then they would be round going to round three. But it just gave me a bit more time, so I rode a week before Donington National. I got dispensation to go and ride at Donington. I just went on a track day, and all I wanted to know because it was my left ankle, which was my gear shift. I didn't care how fast or slow I was. All I wanted to know was it was it pain free with my ankle, and it was probably like. 80% there um so I was like okay let's do it so I went to Donington the week after uh I think I qualified eighth I did my fastest ever lap I've done around Donington which was stupid I don't know how I did that but and my ankle was fine just the only problem I had was every time I kind of changed direction so for the people that have rode at Donington if you came out of the old hairpin and then you go up through Schwantz and Starkey's the left, pushing my ankle and bending it there and trying to shift at the same time wasn't ideal. But what I didn't realise was as the weekend went on, I'd been doing some training at home, but I was kind of limited to what I could do. And as the weekend went on, I was just getting more and more fatigued. Uh, I did race one on Sunday and finished sixth. <laughs> uh, and I was right behind Leon for fifth. So I was really pleased with that. But then the last race, I was completely finished. I f finished 11th, I think. I had massive arm pump in both races on Sunday. Um, I was just hanging on for dear life, really, in that last race. I was just, I started dropping massively in my lap times. But I managed to, I thought if I can score some points, then I'll just finish. But if I was 16th, then I probably would have just pulled in. But I was in 11th, I think, and, and just managed to scrape some points. So at that point, it was job done for me. I knew what I needed to do to get fit after that. And it was just about doing some more riding and and having some more time in, in the gym and on my push bike, really. So, Snetton safety car incident. And I had the unfortunate job of when you appeared at the second place spot to tell you that you didn't finish second. <laughs> One of those, um, you need to move across. So just talk us through what happened, or in your mind, what happened in the safety car. What what previously I've done with safety cars? Tell tell all. Right, I can I can say well I can also say what I want now anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, it's not like that. But yeah, the safety car I came out the last corner at Snetterton and the pit lane kind of like bottlenecks as you go in. So I understand the safety car's reason after that they have to slow down, but also I kind of felt like I gave them enough gap that. Because the the run onto the start finish straight is so long that I kind of wanted to go go with the flow and not park everyone at the last corner and just carry momentum through, um, and 
and just follow the speed of the safety car. But I probably anticipated the safety car to go into this pit lane faster than it did. But then the safety car kind of group's reason was that they have to slow down to, to not crash into the pit lane barriers, which I get. But at that point, I'd, I'd anticipated it. I'd come out the last corner. I saw it wasn't going as fast. I wasn't close to, to hitting it by any means because I'd given it enough gap. But it meant that I just had to drift left before it turned into to pit lane. And at that point as well, if I had rolled off coming out of the last corner as the safety car was turning in, then it, it would have meant that I just backed everyone up. And I think I would have been penalised anyway in the fact that it looked like I'd done it on purpose, which isn't the the way I ride anyway. And I wanted to just have a good run onto the start finish straight. So I anticipated it incorrectly. incorrectly. And I got through that and um, I made, Brad came past, but I wasn't panicking, but I just got a massive slipstream up the start finish straight and made a stupid mistake, ran wide at turn one. And at that point, Glenn came underneath me. And I was so frustrated with myself because I just felt like I'd thrown the way uh, the win away and Glenn passed me. I thought, no, I need to get back past you because I can win this. But at that point, there was only a couple of well, four laps maybe left. So Brad had done enough to, to get the win. I had to fend Glenn off um, and finish the race in second. But at that point, I didn't realise I had a penalty with the safety car. Um, I also, at the time, didn't think I'd done anything wrong because... There's a race in the middle of last year at Donington National where four of us overtook the safety car. Does anyone know that? Yeah, a few people know because yeah. I've sent them the video of it. But <laughs> as the as Donington National, you come out of a left hander, the car turns left into pit lane, and I just was leading and I overtook it with probably more room. But there was four guys behind. I think there was me, Brad, Jason, and Hickman. So I came in and and you were like you're in third, not second, because you've had a penalty. Glenn wasn't on the podium, who was even more angry than me, and which rightly so, um, because he'd had a good race as well. Um, and then it meant Hickman, that was nothing to do with anyone, ended up second, and Brad had gapped us enough that he... Still won. Yeah, he still won by a few tenths. So, so yeah, you chauffeured... Chauffeured? Ushered. Ushered me into pit lane uh, into the third place and um and yeah so at that point I didn't know but that was actually my last podium uh in BSB and for this year and uh yeah it was just a disappointing way to end that weekend because I felt like I should have won I ended up finishing third and uh and yeah it was just the way the rules are now they've changed the rule that if you do it again nothing you're disqualified so um yeah, it's just the way it was. So at that point, that was the sh the the main championship finished. The showdown contenders um, were set, which I think I actually ended sixth. I got up to sixth or fifth overall. Um, but the amount of podium credits I'd scored, I was actually third in podium credits, which put me third going into the showdown. Um, very similar to points to what I was off the leader last year going into the showdown. Um, and this year I had Brad and Jason in front of me. So with the two injuries and coming back, missing rounds, missing that first race at Knock Hill, but then coming back and winning. Winning a race was like just... I, if I didn't race for the rest of the year, that was fine because all I wanted to do was just come back and prove why I've got the number one play, why I came back to BSB. People kind of doubted me and said I wouldn't be the same or I wouldn't be as fast. And I was coming back and was lapping faster than I'd ever done at all of these tracks and to do it in such a short amount of time to get ready to get fit again to come back from injuries my shoulder has caused me problems all year which I haven't really said and the two ankles just kept swelling every time I rode um, but as the year went on it just got better and better and better and the at the back of my mind being champion again would have been amazing because it was by far the best day of my, my life last year and I wanted to try and repeat it um, but with what I'd done, I was satisfied and I was just thought I'll get bonuses of finishing the top three. So I thought I'd try and finish in the top three in the championship and I hadn't been to Alton, which was the first showdown. So 
I kind of knew that I was going to be on the back foot there a little bit and I would have to push on at Donington and, and Brands. So at that point, I actually got on a plane to Spain. So I left Snetterton. You were on the podium back in the showdown. Mm. And when I left, it was like, well, your very first injury at the start of the year, that was a result just because I remember when you first did that, we thought that's the season over, like we've ruined the season already. We've only done three laps around Cartagena, mm. 10 laps. And then you came back from that the second one I was away in Texas yeah and landed at the airport and dad said you broke your leg and I was like great fantastic the good thing was I wasn't in the country so I didn't have to push the wheelchair that time so that was a bonus or wash you or inject you or whatever the other things we had to do it was a bonding experience wasn't it yeah brilliant and then the third one uh, sorry not the third one so I went away to Aragon and when I left uh, the basic plan was you're going to go to Alton. No, we, we we shook hands and said, when you come back, I'll be two-time British Superbike champion. That's what we actually said. Right. <laughs> but it didn't work out. <laughs> so in, the plan was you're going to basically ride round at Alton in the hope that you sort of finish on the podium. Not ride round, because you can't just ride round in BSB. <laughs> but not go all out, finish on the podium three times, hopefully win a race. Yeah. And... Um, set yourself up for Donington, which is a really strong track for you. There's a good chance you could win three races there or be really strong anyway. Mm. By which point the, co- the championship will be back in contention and Brands is your golden buzzer track. You could There's a tap in around Brands if you yeah. can just get there. <laughs> How wrong we were. So I've sat down in a bar with John McPhee and a few of the, the other vision track mechanics and sat down with live timing and the race we didn't actually have the video. Someone else in the bar from Olin's had the video on their phone. And we've got live timing on. And out of nowhere, um, it just came up. Mackenzie crashed, which I just I couldn't get my head around. That, that wasn't part of the plan. So I didn't think that would happen. Someone then walked in behind us and went, uh, your brother's just had a massive crash. I was like, all right. Um, is he all right? No, I reckon he's broke his leg. <laughs> <laughs> at which point we went, can we have five more shots? <laughs> <laughs> we got a five more shots. <laughs> and uh, text dad. We were actually looking at the text the other day, weren't we? Hang on, let me get the text. Hold up. These are the texts from my mum. So. Text him in the pictures. Oh, yeah, we'll get to that in a second. So I've text mum. Is he all right? Mum, med centre. Me, let me know. Mum, doctor says maybe leg. Me, top or bottom. Mum, waiting for him. Me, any more news? Uh, broken left femur. <laughs> femur. <laughs> on way Stoke. <laughs> He's no phone, gas and air. But what a nightmare. Needs plating, I'd think. <laughs> and then just this picture. <laughs> I see. That was that. Uh, so, yeah, let's get to the crash. Talk us through the crash. Because I don't think you really said much about it, what the crash was like, and everything went on. Because this is the most traumatic story I've ever heard in my life. You won't stop going on about it. Not quite. It's not the most traumatic, I don't think. But. What actually happened was the first race, something I can't remember what happened. I got a bad start, or someone parked me, and I just lost the, the toad, or like the group in front. And I didn't actually know. I don't even know where I qualified. I think I qualified on the second row, or was I on front row? I can't remember. No, maybe second row. And I thought I'm just going to try and go with them off the start and get dragged around because it's what I did it last year, and it just for some reason worked. Um, so, because I didn't know what kind of pace I actually had, because I just felt like I was on the back foot all weekend, just because I hadn't ridden there um, this year. So f- I eventually got to f- sixth or fifth, and I had a big gap in front, but I just f- started closing the gap down, which was to Brad had taken off. It was from second to fourth, I think, and I just started closing the group down, and then. Unfortunately, crashed at Shell Oils, like a proper strange crash. I locked the front. I was obviously just pushing too hard, but it was kind of like I needed to do that because I knew Brad was up the road. Jason was in front of me, so there's no point sitting in sixth place and Brad taking a chunk of points out of me. I just, I need, these were the races I need to get as close to him or try and beat Jason. So anyway, I crashed. The next race was Sunday and... I got a lot better start. Brad then again got in the lead. I was in third, I think, behind Rory. 
and I then got to second and I felt really comfortable in second. I wasn't at that point. I thought there's no point trying to catch Brad because I didn't have the pace to catch him anyway because he was too strong and I was just sort of trying to settle for a podium. So Bridewell came past me into uh, his chicane, the second chicane, I think. Or was that Nickerbrook? Anyway, the second chicane at Alton, Hizzy's, and as I turned into the first right when Bridewell, oh no, sorry, I was in second, Bridewell was behind me, he just passed Hickman, Hickman was fourth, just as I turned in to Hizzy's, I clipped my engine casing off the curb and I just slowly lost the front, and because it goes right then left, if you slide on the grass fast enough, you'll slide back onto the track, so I slid off and I thought, oh god, I'm down, right, it's a small crash, I'm all right. But as I slid off the track, I then slid back on. Bridewell kind of missed my bike, which was sliding faster than me. So I was one way. My bike was in the middle. Bridewell went round me, and Hickman just had nowhere to go. So bless him. He just tried his best to try and stop the bike and try and avoid me. But I just the, the way I slid was just so unfortunate, and I just slid right into his path. And he wasn't even going that fast, but my the way I slid, my leg was like up midair on my back and he just rode <laughs> rode into the side of my femur and the the impact of it snapped it that much that I was just because there was so much adrenaline in my body I crashed anyway so I was sliding I didn't know what was going on and then I just felt something hit me and I kind of rolled but as I rolled the so my legs now snapped from the middle of my femur down to my leg and my whole leg well, my Alpine Star boot appeared next to my head. And then as I rolled, it went back down. And I'm like, oh my God, I've snapped my leg. I don't know what I've done, whether I'd completely mashed my ACL or broke my hip or I don't know what I'd done. And then Hickey came up and I think he knew that he obviously knew what, which part he had hit me. And he was like, are you okay? Are you okay? And I'm like, I've broke my leg. Well, I won't say what I said, but along the lines of I've, snapped my leg I've snapped my leg I think I broke my femur and he was he was so nice he was like just breathe just breathe you're all right you're all right and then then this is where it was just the the adrenaline started wearing off the realization that I'd broke my leg again um Hickey had gone at this point so the marshals were over at me they were trying to get me to they didn't know what was wrong so <laughs> they their job is to try and make the rider as safe as possible. So safety-wise, get them off the track because the race was still live. But I knew that my leg was snapped and they didn't. And I was they were trying to get me to go on the stretcher. And I was like, no, I, I, was, I was said, I am not moving. My leg is completely snapped. I'm shouting at this point. I actually apologized to the marshal after and he came around and saw me. But I just was saying, you need to red flag it because I've snapped, snapped my leg or the safety car needs to come out or something. So anyway, Stuart Higgs red flagged it. They got the ambulance there. They got me on gas and air, got me in the medical centre. Um, they cut my leathers off me. The medics, I <laughs> I was quite, I was on gas and air, so I was just being loud and shouting and screaming. And one minute I was laughing, next minute I'm crying they cutting my leathers off. They needed to straighten my leg to make sure it was safe because it was off at an angle. They straightened it. They got it all strapped up. Um, and then I got taken to, to Stoke Hospital. It wasn't so straightforward as I've explained it there. I'm squeezing onto people's arms. I'm giving people abuse. <laughs> Mum's telling me to calm down. I'm like, I've snapped my leg. What do you want me to do? Like, I was in so much pain. Um, and for the people that have taken gas and air, it definitely takes the pain away but it it just I think the impact was that bad in my leg and the, it had snapped and there was a fragment off it, it was just traumatic and I just wanted it to be over I just wanted my leg to be straight and just to be pain free and it just whatever they did just wasn't working so I got in an ambulance it kind of calmed down at that point I'm not bad when I come to to, I feel like I've got a good pain threshold. This definitely tested me, but I just got in. I felt like I got myself into like into a place where I could just be settled and and I was okay with what happened. I 
I'd injured myself that much this year that I was just over it. I thought, do you know what? It's done now. I don't have to worry about coming back. I don't have to worry about a championship. It's finished. And that was that. So I got to hospital, uh, had my leg in traction to keep it straight. And then um, I got, again, the opera because the femur's quite traumatic injury. Um, they had, I got put up on the list that I needed an operation straight away. So I think... I went in that afternoon, Sunday afternoon, and I got my operation Monday at some point. Um, I then, when I got to the hospital, I was actually in one ward and Christian did, and I just had that horrible crash where uh, he got stuck in Rory's bike, or Rory got stuck in his bike. He hit his head. So, Weed, his mum, and Christian were in one ward, and me, mum, and dad were in the other. And Christian's Mum is obviously really good friends with our mum and dad because they've known each other for years. So they went off and got a coffee together. And I mean, I didn't actually see Christian because he was <laughs> he was pretty much out of it. And I just had a truckload of ketamine to get my legs straight. So I was in a completely different planet. Um, <laughs> so they gave... I didn't just take it recreationally, <laughs> by the way. Clip on Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they gave me ketamine. It was... Well, they gave me ketamine just to knock me out and to to get the bone straight because the medics had basically got it straight as in the bones were in line, but they needed to, I can't, I don't know, I was completely out of it, but they needed to do something to make sure it was straight. So, <laughs> yeah, that was traumatic. But after that, I was in a quite a good place. I was obviously had a lot of painkillers in me, but it, I was all right with it. And... Yeah, that was that. That was 2022 season over. I then got an operation, which was a a rod from the top of my hip all the way down to my knee. And I've got two screws going across the bottom and two screws at the top. So all in all now, I had, prior to this year, I had one screw in my wrist, which I've still got in. And now I've got a rod, two plates and 19 screws in between my left and right leg. So, um. And yeah, the femur. I've known I've know a few riders that have broke their femur, and they said it's pretty traumatic, and it's not a nice injury to have. And I can back them up on that. It, out of all the injuries I've had, and especially this year, it's by far the worst. Um, it's quite a scary injury because there's a big your femoral artery, I think, that runs down your leg. I was really lucky that I didn't didn't um, nip that, so. It can be quite scary if you do, so I was lucky on that side. And with the way the break was, okay, I had to have a rod in my leg, but it, was, it wasn't it was in a, a million bits. Like I've seen the X-ray V in Hutchinson's femur, and it was just like someone had dropped a glass on the floor. It was that smashed up. So I was lucky in that sense, and it could have been worse. Hickey it could have hit me around my pelvis or around my chest or stomach. So I was lucky in that sense, and um, yeah. I was in hospital for a few days. Mum and dad kind of went home and then came back because I was in Stoke Hospital. Brad Ray came and visited me. So I was all right in hospital. And, and when I got home, mum, mum's obviously really good because she's looked after all of us over the years with injuries and stuff. So she knows the drill. I had my physio anyway, Stuart. Um, and, I, so, and all the equipment I bought anyway, I was in a pretty good place to, to get fit again and and I'm now in December, so I'm about two, three months on, and or two and a bit months on, and I'm back. Well, we back yeah, I'm back to normal, back cycling. I've got one more scan in the middle of December to try and make sure the the bones fully healed because the last scan it was still snapped, but I'm. Um, going on dog walks, I can go to Tesco on my own, I can <laughs> go in the gym, I can start training and putting weight through my leg and doing everything as normal. So the only thing I haven't done yet is is ride a motorbike. But um, I'm in no rush to get back yet, and especially this side of Christmas, and um, just make sure I'm fully fit for January and, and, yeah, crack on with 2023. So today is... It's five o'clock. Well, it's one minute to five on the 2nd of December. In one minute's time, you're going to announce that you're no longer riding for McCamps, Yamaha, oh, yeah. Yeah. which is uh, big news because you've been with them for five years now in total. Six. six years. Five years on Superbike, six years in total with Supersport. So 
that obviously begs the question, if you're not riding for McCam's Yamaha, um, I think it'd be too early to announce on this channel. I think the team might be quite annoyed if we announce what you're doing. Uh, but yeah, what are you thinking for next year? I'm riding um, Vision Track Moto3 as a third bike. Michael's put a bike out. Um, I'm actually lighter than Scott and Josh anyway and smaller than them both, so I reckon I can recreate my Moto3 career. But uh, yeah, I've left left McCams and BSB as a whole, which I've never thought about it because I've just had one kind of goal in mind to try and get back to World Championship and to try and race in 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 World Championship in in the World Superbike paddock especially and and yeah I've wrote my post out today and just thinking about leaving and stepping away from BSB and just more so McCams with Steve Rogers and everyone involved and I've pretty much had the same crew now for five years I've had this yeah, same crew, same crew chief, and I was. We were looking at all stats today. I'd think I would had two mechanicals, which were no one's fault. It was just really unlucky. And over a hundred races, I think I won sixteen races, finished on the podium over forty times, I think. And yeah, I'm just thinking about the relationships I've built with my crew chief, Chris, who's like one of my best friends now, the crew that I had with Alistair, Kev, Tim, Mike, Matt, um, and then other people that were in that first year with like PJ and Paul and Stewie. Uh, and yeah, it's quite sad thinking that I'm leaving because they are like a, a family in a way. And um, yeah, from that side, it's it's strange. I've never been in this part of my career before where I've stepped away from a team like that. I've always just been with a team for kind of one, two years and or rode different championships and then moved on. But I kind of like built a proper relationship with everyone and, and Steve Rogers. I never fell out. We never had any arguments the whole time and we just got on so well as a team. And um, and with Jason as well, who we share a few of the, the staff with uh, Mike and, and Tim. And um, together in these four years I've been teammates with Jason, we've had such especially the last three years. It's been so successful between me and him and it's like it's all down to to the, the crew. We have our engine builder is my mechanic, but he also builds engines for Jason and we share the our electronics guy, we share our Olin's guy. My crew chief Chris does a lot behind the scenes as well as um Jason's chief mechanic Tony, which it benefits me and then Stuff Spanner, my crew chief does also benefits Jason. Um Ollie, the PR man, we kind of cause him, <laughs> we make his life easy sometimes. It also makes his life hell with press releases and stuff. But um, yeah, we've just had a, for me and especially my side of the garage, we've just had such a good relationship and, and good time over the last five years. And yeah, it's all ending. Uh, kind of said my farewells um, the other day. And yeah, I think I'll definitely come back and watch some BSB races next year for sure. Um but yeah, stepping away and moving into the World Superbike paddock. <laughs> no. <laughs> Thank you for watching, everyone. And we will be back to tell you exactly what he's doing in the video very soon. Vision track, mate, three. I'd never let you ride for me. <laughs> Bye.